Solar PV Cast by Shift, a podcast exploring solar energy and the role it plays in improving our lives and our planet. Here's your host, Chris Palliser. Energy storage. Sounds like it could be something that Thanos from the Avengers is trying to do with the Tesseract. But I guess kind of. <laughs> Uh, but it is the ability to take energy you are producing from the sun, for example, in the world of solar, and store for use at a later date, a.k.a. a battery. There are many questions around batteries, like how long will they last? What can they actually power in my home? To answer those, our resident energy storage expert, senior project engineer Steve Unger, joins us once again. Hello, Steve. Hey, Chris. Nice to be here. Batteries. Mm. We're kind of not where the rest of the world is when it comes to batteries, um, but it is growing in Canada. And, and right now, they're kind of more off-grid, correct? Yeah, typically batteries have been used in off-grid because you have no choice. Right. Um, but we're definitely seeing a much higher adoption of batteries. You know, um, when I started or even when some of your other guests started, it was like 1% of the, the market. I think it's now up to 5 or 6% of the market and growing. Um, and, of course... Uh, in November, at least, uh, it, well, in Canada, uh, it's about this time of year, our phones start ringing with people saying, hey, what about battery backup? You know, my grid's gone down. This is right. the time of year everyone starts thinking about it. The storm rolls in, all of a sudden you're down. Now, we should say um, a lot of people don't, you don't necessarily need a battery because of net metering and being grid tied, right? We totally. touch on that a little bit. Yeah, totally. To take the advantage of, of grid tie and solar, um, and to offset, to reduce your BC Hydro bill or your utility bill, you don't need batteries. Um, you can do it without batteries. But what that means is that when the power does go down, when the grid goes out, your solar goes down as well. So right now, at least at shift, a lot of the people that are looking for those batteries are off-grid, obviously. Yeah. And, of course, people that live uh, maybe on the Gulf Islands, where when the power goes out, you're, you're sitting in the dark for a while. That's right. Yeah, but even so, even in the cities, people are looking at it now because they're saying, well, you know, I have things I want to be continue doing when the grid's out. Um, I have maybe critical um, appliances or aquariums or uh, medical equipment that I need to keep running when right. the grid goes out. So, um, but I don't necessarily want to go out and buy a generator because maybe my municipality won't even let me put a generator in. It's noisy, it's stinky, it's fossil fuels. Right. What about battery backup? enter you and shift and and the battery conversation how big is a battery a general battery there's lots out there there's the tesla power wall which shift does but there are other options how big are they they're different sizes how long will they last all of those questions oh my gosh that's <laughs> <laughs> that's a big one to throw at yeah, you. yeah that's a big question um yeah so the tesla power wall i i guess is probably here I'm using my hands on the <laughs> radio. Uh, it's probably about two feet wide, four feet tall, maybe eight or ten inches deep. Um, so that kind of gives you a sense of the size, and, and you know that will back up your house for depending on how you use it, anywhere from you know 24 hours, you know maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, depending on what you're doing. But yeah, typically these batteries they take up a lot of space. You know if you're using a more conventional type of battery, like a lead acid type battery. The batteries typically are, you know, two to three so times the size of a car battery, and usually you have eight of them. So you can see this starts taking up a lot of space. It also weighs a lot. A Tesla Powerwall weighs about 300 pounds. Wow. So you got to plan for the weight. You got to plan for the space. And, and you mentioned, I've seen, you know, on the Facebook groups out there, for example, Solar Vancouver Island or things like that, you can see people with their setups, and yeah, they've got like 20 car batteries. <laughs> Yeah. all hooked in yeah there's obviously that is one way but with new technology tesla powerwall uh solar edge has a, a the yep. solar i believe yeah is another battery option are they generally about the same that 24 hour mark i guess it depends on use though right? it's totally totally different right it can yeah. vary quite a bit depending on the on the size and the number of batteries that you install so you can get a huge range of of time you know some people just want to back up for a couple of hours right so then you probably end up with a sp smaller battery like a ups kind of system um if you want days of backup you know you're probably talking a small room <laughs> right tesla powerwall let's kind of picture this right now i'm a homeowner 
I want to back up a few things. What exactly would a Tesla, for example, would a Tesla Powerwall single one back up? My grid goes down. What can I run? Right, right. Good question. So a Tesla Powerwall is able to provide 5,000 watts of power continuously. So that means it can supply 5,000 watts worth of electrical power to appliances, whatever they are in your home. It'll surge to a little bit more for a short period of time, but generally speaking, if you go more than the 5,000 watts for 30 seconds, <clears throat> the power wall will shut itself down to protect itself. What would that be example of? My phone? I'm trying to think of things oh, yeah. in my house, you know? Uh, that's quite, a, that's a fair bit. So, you know, you could do your fridge, freezer. Um, you could do a, a entire hot water tank with that. I wouldn't recommend it for the next reason we'll talk about. Um, but 5,000 watts is, is a, a reasonable amount of power, not a huge amount of power. Uh, you have to remember a 200 amp service in a house, which is what the typical is there for most people, that's 48,000 watts. So we're saying we now have 5,000 watts, right. right? So it's about a, a t uh, eighth you know, of what your house would normally you know, run on. So you basically can power kind of typically with plugs. Pe yeah, people power, you know, fridge, freezer, Wi Fi, lights. Um, you know, chargers for cell phone, you know, you could probably microwave as long as you're not cooking for too long. Um, the things we don't typically power are anything that heat, particularly things called like called resistive heating. So standard hot water tanks, baseboard heaters, um, heat pump, we'll, we'll have to talk about a little bit more, but we don't typically heat things with battery backup systems. In the same way, when we talked about off grid, you don't use off grid electricity to heat or cook. Right, and that's because it's just such a drain on the battery. That's right. So if I'm not using heat, I'm just using maybe the fridge and some plugs, charging my phone, maybe the TV a little bit. How many hours is that roughly gonna get me? Yeah, so a Tesla Powerwall, so we talked about the power side of it. Now we'll talk about the energy side of it. So a Tesla Powerwall has um, 13 and a half uh, kilowatt hours of energy stored in it. Okay. So a full battery is 13 and a half kilowatt hours. Um, to put this in perspective, the average house in BC, I'm not sure about Nova Scotia or other provinces, but in BC consumes 40,000 kilowatt hours per day. Or oh, sorry, 40 kilowatt hours, not 40,000. Okay, 40, right. 40 kilowatt hours right. per day. Um, a Tesla Powerwall is 13 and a half kilowatt hours. So right. you can see if yeah. you ran your house normally, you'd drain your Tesla Powerwall in, what is it, half, less than half a day. Right, yeah, yeah. About so a third of a day. So that's where you have to make those kind of adjustments. Yeah. So if you pare down, you know, to a subset of your loads in your house or your appliances, then, yeah, you could conceivably 24, 48 hours. But again, it comes down to how you use right. the system, how you yeah. use the battery. What if I'm, I'm greedy? I'm really rich, too. And I want my house to, I want nothing to change. Uh, the grid's gone down, but that doesn't matter. I want to sit in my hot tub. I want to watch Netflix. I want to run my house normally. Yeah. You're going to need a lot of battery. You need a, a lot of batteries. Um, you know, to kind of back up a whole house, you need seven to eight Tesla power walls. So at, you know, 20 to 25 grand a pop, you can okay. see that sets, starts adding up pretty quickly. Right. Um, you know, even at that, Again, you, you may still only get two or three or four days, depending on what you're running off of that. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Do you want, you know, if you want to, you could probably spend, you know, hundred, two hundred thousand dollars on battery backup and, you know, be able to continue. But eventually you will run out of energy, right? right? Because a battery doesn't create energy, it just stores it. So the energy has got to come either from the sun, from the grid, or, or from a generator. Got my solar array on my roof. I'm just kind of trying to picture this. I got my, my battery storage. Power goes down. Are my solar panels continually powering that battery? Yes. Yeah, so what happens is the nice part about the battery backup system is the batteries will generate what's called a microgrid or a little grid that's, you know, in your house. The solar panels will see that and they'll say, oh, everything's cool, and they'll start generating electricity again. And they'll power the loads in your house and they'll keep the battery topped up again depending on how much sun it is right right of course i mean most of the time you get your outages in the winter when we don't have nearly as much sun 
uh, as we do in the summer. So right. So happens in the summer. Maybe a crow gets fried on the lines. Yeah. <laughs> you're then, good. Then you're yeah. You're good. The crow's not good, but you're yeah, good. Yeah. 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 Totally. Now, what about in Canada? I guess this is a hurdle in our country because from, you know, October to April, March, April, we need heat. This yes. is part of living in Canada. So in order for this country to look at battery as a backup, I guess it's just more money. It would be more money. Again, we can have a discussion about heat pumps because heat pumps are a much more efficient way of heating your house. Um, so that might be possible for, you know, for a short period of time right. with the battery backup system. Um, I mean, the situation is, especially for a country like Canada, you know, we've moved away from systems that are more resilient in terms of heating your house. Um, so this is, you know, an another thing we should be doing in a house. Unfortunately, you know, you and I were over at BCIT yesterday looking at some of the amazing house building techniques they have on insulation. I was looking, I was going to ask them. I was blown away yeah. realizing that, you know, you now have a foot thick wall with insulation on the inside and the outside. That it is an amazing way to think about, well, how do I not need to heat my house? Totally. And I think that's where a discussion needs to go as opposed to saying, you know, well, how do I get how many batteries so that I can keep? Right. Totally. Yeah. How, yeah. Instead of just cranking the heater in the house, how do I keep that heat in? Yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask about that because, yeah, shout out to BCIT. There's eight inches of insulation on the outside. It's not yeah. just your, your plywood and your vapor yeah. barrier or whatever, your building paper. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it makes a lot of sense. Somebody listening to the podcast, watching this on YouTube, interested in battery, what are some things you want to make sure that they're aware of when they're looking at batteries and, and planning that out? Yeah. Um, I, I guess the key message I want to say is, you know, when you buy a battery backup system, you're not buying days of battery backup or hours of battery backup. That's not something that we can necessarily control because it's up to the user, the client, the homeowner to decide how much energy they're using, right? When you buy a battery backup system, you're buying an energy storage. So you're buying X number of kilowatt hour of storage from us. Um, so the analogies I kind of like to use is imagine you buy a hot water tank from a plumber. Right. And you say to the plumber, well, how many hours of showers can I have with, from this hot water tank? Right. Right. You, you don't buy a hot water tank based on hours of showers. You buy 80 liter hot water tank right. and then that 80 liters will last as long as, you know, could be a couple of days if you have, you know, it could be a couple of hours, I should say, if you have teenagers in your house, yep. or it could be, you know, a week if you're pretty frugal with your, your energy. Right. So it's all going to depend on you. Um, the other analogy I use is let's, you know, take a Tesla Powerwall and assume, you know, I have $13,500 in my bank account. Well, how long is that $13,500 going to last? You could blow it on a pretty fun weekend, right? Yeah. Or you could stretch it out over a month or, totally. or more, and it's the same with the battery backup. Right. So it's going to come down to how you use how you use that energy, and you have to necessarily change your lifestyle when the grid goes down and 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 be a little bit more frugal and a little bit more aware of how much energy you have in your battery. Those are great analogies. 100%. It makes sense. Money in your bank account's going down. Like you said, you blow it on a weekend or you can make it last the entire year if yeah. you want. And and batteries are the same. That's great. Yeah, I'm just trying to think if I have any other questions about batteries, but I think for the most part we've we've touched on it, Steve. Sounds good. Thank you very much. I enjoy our conversations. Same here. Thanks, Chris. The Solar PV Cast by Shift with Chris Palliser. To begin your solar journey, visit shift.ca.